Many of you have probably seen the recent viral videos about Hanforth Parish Council and the way they've conducted their Zoom meeting. So in this episode, myself and Andy are going to watch that whole thing, as well as go through our pointers and tips of how you can have probably a more effective Zoom meeting and hopefully make this whole process a little bit easier for you. It's going to be an interesting style of video, something we've not done before, and hopefully you'll find it entertaining, enjoying and educational. What are you thinking there, Andy? Yeah, so a watch along video. So it is a first for us. I think this will be quite fun. Um, so we go to a lot of meetings that are recorded, don't we, Gandhi? And I'm sure um, we're, we're grateful that they're not available to the wider audience, although I think our meetings are not as dysfunctional as this one. That being said, um, yeah. I think sometimes it's fun to watch something at the extremes of effectiveness. Um, and uh, it makes it easier to point out those sorts of mistakes, which actually occur in, in much more functional meetings like our own, but you can do so in a more comical way. So I'm quite looking forward to this. And I think even if you don't have a horrendously um, un, un, uh, unfunctional meeting, I think you can still get something from this. So it should be fun. Absolutely. Um, and so we're going to share the screen that Andy's got there and we're just going to stop and start as we go through and kind of show our pros, uh, kind of tips and cons and that kind of stuff through the video itself. And um, if you do find these useful, definitely leave us a like below to let us know you like this kind of content. And this may feed into some stuff we've got developing in development for you. So definitely let us know. So shall we get started then? It's starting off with a bit of an interesting screen already, isn't it, Andy? Yeah. So somebody doesn't have their camera on at mm -hmm. the moment. That's fine. Maybe she's eating. I don't know. But shall we shall we go for it? Let's go. Can we be assured that we won't be thrown out of the meeting like we were last time? Um, I, as long as we have reasonable behaviour from everyone, no one would be excluded from the meeting. I, I was I was thrown out of the meeting. Can we uh, pause it there, Andy? <laughs> yes. What, what do you want to say, Andy? So I, I guess the first thing I want to comment on, it looks like we've got two uh, participants already. We've got um, the Hanford PC Clark, um, which I believe is Mr. Tolver, if I remember his name correctly. And we've got um, Jackie Weaver, who seems, from what I can understand, to be the, the coordinator for this particular meeting. Because she seems to be the one with the power, shall we say. Um, so, you know, people talk about her possibly having booted people at previous meetings, that kind of stuff. Um I guess I just find it interesting that Jackie doesn't have a camera on at the start. I know you mentioned about possibly eating or that kind of stuff. But I, personally, one of my tips would always be if you're the coordinator, so the person who's kind of the host for the meeting, ideally you should have your camera on unless there's a really, really good reason not to, because you're going to be the focus for a lot of the way that the meeting runs and things. I'm also still trying to figure out who the actual chair is. I'm assuming it's Mr. Tolver here. But um, yeah, it'd be nice to clarify that. Yeah, I think so. Um yeah, let's get rolling. Although I think what I would say is these people clearly have some sort of history going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Maybe we would have liked to have been at the last meeting because it sounds like that was fun too. So let's roll. It's quite right, Bertil, so was Councillor Brighton. At the point of order, Chair. So in, interruption without raised hand. Just gonna just gonna flag that in there. I'm not sure Guitar Man mm -hmm. was was helpful. Um, True. Could we start them again? Chair. Okay. Okay. We haven't started the meeting yet. Do you want to speak anyway? Yes, I'd like to uh, ask a point of order. I'm in. We're not in. The, we're not in a meeting, so points of order are not. When's it started yet? Yeah. No. Points of order apply during the debate, and I want to ask Jackie: Was it you who quoted a point of order? Yes, it was indeed. Are you, are you here as the proper officer? I am here offering support to Hanforth Parish Council in the conduct of this meeting this evening. I'm not the proper officer. Is that as clerk or proper officer? There's no difference between clerk and proper officer. Um, of course there is. Yes, there is. Isn't Mr. Tolliver the clerk? Or oh, it says so in the bottom left-hand corner. Yeah, so I'm this confused. is where I think some of my confusion came because I thought he was actually the chair, but like you said, his um, Zoom thing at the bottom says that he's the, the clerk, which is slightly confusing. Um, the other part, there's a little bit of background backbiting um, that you can pick out as, as well. So other people making comments over, and, and obviously that's disturbing the... The recording view. So, so the way Zoom works is when you record things, it focuses on the person that's speaking. Also, when you're in a meeting, most people tend to have the gallery view, which is where you've got most 
you know, all the different people on your screen and that kind of thing. So what you see from a live meeting compared to a recorded one is slightly different. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm already a little bit confused and there's a lot, yeah, context. I'm already, I'm already amused to learn, to learn more about all of these characters. They all seem fascinating. And, and this me. point of order thing is slightly confusing me. I mean, both you and I have been part of fairly um, strict, shall we say, meeting agendas and, and structures and things. And I'm already confused about this point of order business. I, I don't know about you, but... Never, uh, never heard it come up um, before. No. Uh, but so... Uh, I'm, I'm going to suggest Mr. Sullivan um, labels himself correctly on the screen um, yep. because that's important. Uh, just just in terms of providing a, a critique and things, put put a proper name because we actually have we some people come to our meetings, don't we? And for whatever reason, it's not always clear who they are. You're like, who right. are you? Can you identify yourself? So it's with their child's iPad or something like that. So so yeah. putting your correct name and, and important <laughs> to remember, particularly with Zoom, it tends to remember the last username you put in. So um, worth, like you say, changing it to whatever is useful or relevant to the particular meeting. And I guess the other comment I give to Mr. Tolliver, maybe worth repositioning his camera a little bit so he's a bit further back. Um, he's cutting out of the imagery several times. So right now, for example, we paused it. You can't see the top half of his head, um, which is, yeah, not the, not the best positioning, shall we say. Yeah. And, and maybe they should establish ground rules as well yes. um, yeah. for... For who's speaking? They they've obviously had a dysfunctional meeting before, so they might wanted to address that. The, the chair might have addressed that by establishing some ground rules, but I think he's uh, too uh, too busy trying to um, have a go at Jackie. I think mm -hmm. so. Let's see how that works out. You must know the basic law. Are we going? I would to, have thought. Are we going to start this meeting? It, it, it isn't it isn't the role of somebody who, however kindly, volunteers to do the clerking for a meeting. To act as a proper officer if they haven't so been appointed. That's okay. against the law. And, and, and let me also quote to you the standing are... orders of Hanforth. But will you stop talking? Unless we are prepared. Shall we stop that there? Please listen. <laughs> Hang on. Go the same yes, Candy, what, what are you drawing our attention to? <laughs> Um, so, uh, I, I mean, you and I have had a little bit of training in terms of how to conduct a meeting. Um, and I'm guessing that comment about the will you stop talking was um, a little bit abrupt, shall we say? I can't imagine that we would ever want to resort to using that kind of tone in a meeting. Um, no, nor a consultation. Yeah. And it doesn't appear to be terribly effective for him either as a, as a mm -hmm. tactic to try and stop Jackie from talking. It doesn't seem to bear, bear, bear fruit. <laughs> no. Uh, and I think it provides a bit of a challenge there because he obviously doesn't have the ability from a remote perspective to control how people are talking. Now, that is a function that the host would have. So the host has generally um, a few extra abilities, shall we say, or superpowers. So being able to mute other people um, and also, as we find out later, being able to remove people from the meeting and things. Um, but as we heard earlier, he, it sounds like Mr. Tolliver was removed from the previous meeting and he's kind of flirting a little bit, I think, with a dangerous situation possibly for him. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Let's roll. But yeah. Let's roll. But yeah. Um, and I think one thing I probably would comment as well, you mentioned earlier about there doesn't appear to have been a ground rule set. So um, how are people going to say that they want to come in on something you know is it that that's probably one of the main ground rules i think every zoom or teams meeting should cover is simply how are you going to raise the attention of the chair or, or whoever's controlling the meeting to say i'm going i want to make a point is it physical hand up on the screen is it electronic hand or is it just speak into the camera and hope that somebody listens which is normally not the best option unless there's only two or three of you to be honest um but yeah shall we continue yeah let's go Oh, my cursor's jumping around. There we go. Can you please listen? Will you stop being whatever it is you're trying to be and just clerk the meeting if that's what you want to do? Thanks, points, of, points of order, according to our standing orders, are determined by the chair. If you want to raise a point of order as a councillor, you ask if you can raise a point of order, you state it, and then the chair decides. It is not for the clerk to raise a point of order. Um, it is not for the clerk to decide a point of order. And you, you, you must be aware of that, or at least God knows what you're doing in your job if you're not aware. Start this meeting, it is. or shall we elect the alternative chairman? Oh, hang on. Yeah, I'm just in a meeting at the moment. Can I give you a call back when it finishes? If 
Oh, I think we have to pause that there, then, yeah. Andy. Candy, I did. I did that the other day when I was in a meeting. I don't know whether you were in the meeting, but I was. Of... I, I was going to. Yeah, I think that was the reason why I asked you to pause it. Um, and yeah, so, so I was going to ask if you remember that. <laughs> Yeah, one of the receptionists came in. I suppose I didn't realise I wasn't muted. Um, mm -hmm. People quickly told me to mute myself, um, which no one does here. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, so e easily done. Just re if you're not talking, then put yourself on mute. I think I'd actually joined the meeting unmuted, and it was a quiet room, and I'd never, I didn't bother to mute myself. Um, mm -hmm. And then someone came in. Yeah. So I guess a tip I often give to most people, particularly, so this is something you can do in Zoom. It's a bit harder to do in other platforms. But actually to just whenever you join, make sure you're unmuted. Sorry, sorry, to make sure that you're muted. And then when you want to speak, rather than unmuting yourself, you just simply hold down the space bar. And that allows you to your microphone to then unmute so you can speak. And the moment you let go of the space bar, you're muted. And more importantly, it means that you're less likely to make one of these faux pas by you saying something and then accidentally saying it to the meeting when you didn't intend it to happen. So for Zoom, that works really well for Teams and other platforms, they have sort of similar things, but not, a, not as slick, if I'm being honest. Right, let's go. Okay. All right, bye, bye. So, Chairman, albeit late, shall we get this meeting started? Oh, we can't see Jackie Weaver. It is this woman. Yeah. <gasps> right, we'll start with... <laughs> We'll start the meeting. I think Julie's I... realised her mic's on. There was a shock yeah. there from Julie. But this meeting has not been called according to the law. The law yeah. has been broken. It has been properly Will called. you please let the chairman this is what he said, please. please. If you disrupt this meeting, I will have to remove you from it. You can't. Sure. It's only the chairman who can remove people from a meeting. You have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. No authority at all. She's just kicked him out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, so some people can remove people from meetings, can't they? If they're being disruptive or they shouldn't be there. So yeah. So as we covered earlier, the host typically or the coordinator for the meeting normally has the ability to remove other people. Um, I guess in really big meetings, there can be multiple people who have that ability, depending on which package you've got. Um, but yeah, it, it's completely possible. And, and sometimes meetings are set up so that that person can't come back in, even if you do it by accident, which is an interesting thing. So Zoom has a specific setting tab that you can click or unclick. And if you remove someone, then they can't come back in no matter what, you, even if you, like I said, if you did it by accident or, or something, um, which actually has happened to me once. Um, I accidentally removed somebody by accident uh, because more because they were having tech issues and it kept causing feedback forgetting that I'd had the box tick that they couldn't be readmitted so they couldn't join us back in the meeting, which is slightly frustrating, but obviously used for a different reason here. Yeah, I'm just, I was going to comment. Now, now that Jackie's camera's on, um, mm -hmm. actually Jackie's got quite a good setup I was going to comment on. Um, she's clearly set herself up a home office if it wasn't a home office already. Yep. She's nicely framed within her camera, which is probably mm -hmm. attached to a Dex desktop uh, monitor looking at the, the angle. Um, the background seems tidy, prevents, uh, projects a professional um, image of Jackie. She's sort of dressed appropriately as mm -hmm. well. She's paying attention. She's got a shelf with with nice items, perhaps showing her, her interests uh, behind her. So now that her camera's on, um, I think that's good. And I think actually um, having a, a think about what's in the background, making sure there's nothing confidential, making sure mm -hmm. there's nothing embarrassing, um, in the background and just sort of thinking about your setup in terms of how it presents you. You know, you th might think about the sort of clothes you wear to a, a physical meeting and what you take with you mm -hmm. and how you behave. Some of the principles apply on camera. So I was just going to give Jackie uh, a bit of a thumbs up there. Absolutely agree with that. I mean, not really many ways I think you can improve that setup, to be honest. Maybe a tad more lighting, I'd say. Um, but then part of this may be down to the resolution of the camera. And obviously, it was putting on a big screen also makes it a bit more impactful and things. So shall we continue? Yeah. No, she's kicked him out. Don't, don't. She's kicked him out. Don't. Right. I'm going to comment. Right. They're in the same room. It's not ideal framing, but what they are not doing, just to give them some credit, they're, they're not both on their individual devices causing a, a feedback audio loop, um, which I've seen happen a lot and still happens sometimes where people are using the same workspace but engaging with separate devices. So I was just going to just gonna highlight that. Definitely. And I'd agree on the framing aspect. So we don't know 
because they are in the, using the same device we don't actually know who's who so it says alex's ipad um i'm assuming just stereotyping probably the younger person's alex maybe um but it does make it interesting and it makes it harder i think for people to then comment because we don't know who's wanting to speak i don't know that's an additional thing generally as well if you're trying to engage fully in a meeting i tend to recommend not using ipads and smartphones because it's harder to engage with a meeting i think it's great to consume one so to watch and to participate but if you're actively having to do things particularly screen sharing is a bit harder to do with a, a tablet based device whereas with a laptop or a desktop a lot easier to do that start type of things but absolutely yeah. and you can see all the participants on screen as well which is which is useful with a desktop yes. true this is a meeting called by two councillors illegally they now elect a chairman no, they can't because the vice chair's here. I take charge. Read the standing Bit of venom there. We don't understand them. Is someone else going to get kicked yeah, out, Candy? I think we just have, yeah. yeah Can I... A copy of this will, in fact, be sent to the monitor officer. Well, well, I hope so. I'm, I'm wondering if people have been made aware in advance of the, the this will be recorded and possibly shared with other people, but that might have been something to share ahead of time. Maybe they're already aware of that. Mm -hmm. Out of those yeah. people Where's the chairman? Where's the chairman gone? like to elect a chairman for this meeting. You don't have to elect a chairman. There's a chairman already installed. A chairman of the council. Councillor Burkle, we've been through this. You don't, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> chairman, the chairman of the council is the is the chairman of the of the. Uh... Could we pause it, Andy? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see. <laughs> yeah. So, can we go back to Councillor Burkle? <laughs> yes, we can. So, as we can see from this part, Andy, um, there's kind of a bright light again above Councillor Burkle, um, and it's a little bit obtrusive, you know, it kind of a bit harsh. Um, and I think one of the key things to remember when it comes to lighting, lighting is always better when it comes onto you rather than if it's behind you, particularly when remote meetings and things. So big windows, bright lights in the background, not so good. Ideally, it should be shining onto you. Um, and always being, I guess, somewhat aware of reflection on glasses, but that's a tricky one to deal with sometimes. But yeah, if I was asking an improvement of Councillor Burkle, that's probably the one I would suggest. Yeah, I think that's where, where to start. There's perhaps a few other improvements too. <laughs> right, let's roll. The chairman of the council is the is the chairman of the of the uh... council. Yeah, I'm going to subpoena everybody. <laughs> uh, Roberto, could I ask you to be to be respectful to Jackie Weaver, please? Okay, good <laughs> intervention from Sue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great response. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here comes the subpoena. Just you go and She's kicked Barry out, Sam. No, Barry, has gone. Oh, stay. We're trying to have a Teams meeting, you fool. We're trying to have a Teams meeting, you fool. So, useful. Yeah, go for it, Andy. I was going to say, so it, it looks like Alex and um, Councillor Burkle have been in interrupted while they're in an mm -hmm. important meeting and they might have thought to uh, warn the other members of the household that they were you know online and in a recorded meeting and that might have been helpful um although actually i mean we're often interrupted aren't we at work people can, as we talked about before so people knock on your door but but um but generally it's good practice i think to let people know that you're going to be involved in a meeting and I think if you are working in an environment where you may have interruptions, having an understanding of how people are going to interrupt you and particularly not end up so the interruptions come straight onto camera. We've all seen some of those hilarious um, videos where people have had background interruptions or the, the famous one with the, the the specialist with his kids running off in the background and his wife trying to stop them from jumping. I mean, it's clearly evident. I guess the other interesting thing as well, um, so it seems Alad and, and it, it, you know, isn't aware that this is a Zoom meeting rather than a team meeting. You know, nomenclature is it? Is it just association? I don't know, but making sure you understand the platform you're using because they are different in the way that they work. Clearly, that that would be useful and, and things. So yeah, mm, true. Right. Oh, we just this. <laughs> Jackie Weaver, I find that uh, the person on Alec Brewerton's uh, Zoom 
is being very disrespectful to everybody. Oh, coming from you, from Birkenhead, that sounds good. <laughs> so if he wasn't being disrespectful before, I think he is now. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that the, the the lady who just popped up, she had quite a, a good home office setup as well. So, so. And, and a nice way of raising the issue, I think. You know, quite respectful in terms of stating that she had a concern. Um, she mentioned that she obviously didn't know the person's name, or maybe she did, but she referenced the interface that they had to make it clear who she was talking about. Um, so yeah, uh, an appropriate way to try and make an intervention. Well, actually, yes, you're right. That was a very well directed intervention. Actually, very good being very disrespectful to everybody oh, coming from you from Birkenhead that sounds good <laughs> wow thank god for that let the chairman call the meeting yes can I, can I propose John Smith please yeah. I'll second it thank you okay. my, my, my first point is to apologize to Jackie for Welcome to Handforth. <laughs> uh, let's, let's not go on to the next video. But um, <laughs> yes, that was um, intriguing. Yeah, that was intriguing. It, it felt like um, order was restored at the end and they perhaps had a, a small number of disruptive, uh, disruptive people there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Any further comments about that, Gandhi, or reflections for yourself oh. or for them? So, so I think important to recognise we've only seen a portion of that meeting. We've not seen the entire thing. Um, it is considerably longer. And I think, as you saw, there was a second video there, which I think is about 20 minutes long. I think the total meeting itself was about an hour, et cetera. Um, and I guess additional thing to say that, so we watched that from um, the Guide Liverpool version of the YouTube one. So just props out that we've used their stream and we'll put that in the show notes to show you where we watched that particular clip from um but i think yeah not how i'd recommend having a remote meeting by any means and definitely some pointers in terms of setup for individual people as well as definitely the structure i think for me would be a key thing to establish you know who's doing what within the roles and setting those ground rules at the start should always happen to be honest in terms of meetings it's fine if you've, you're on your 10th meeting with a group and everyone knows what they are but sometimes it's useful maybe to remind people particularly when you've got situations that look a little bit chaotic what are your Absolutely. thoughts andy yeah so i'm going to reference a, a video that we put out um, before christmas actually called the darker side of zoom meetings or the darker side of video meetings because mm -hmm. i think they're suffering from some of those issues so i think they've in fact they've got the whole gamut really of uh, they've got technical um technical issues in terms of mm -hmm. the equipment they're using and not thinking ahead and using the right equipment um, they've got kind of staging issues in terms of uh, their rooms not being uh, you know, their environments not perhaps being set up right and they're you know not um, warning people that they don't want to be interrupted um, there's sort of behavioral issues which could be present at a, at a physical meeting as well um, I guess but they certainly don't seem to know how to use the platform and I don't know if Hanforth Council has uh, made any training available in terms of how to improve their zoom meetings they could perhaps even uh supply some of our videos to to help uh, yep. make themselves more effective in the future but they don't seem to understand how to use the platform and then also i wonder um if hanford council might have been a, a bit more functional if these people were able to be in the same room and meet each other regularly as i'm sure mm -hmm. perhaps they used to uh before now where they only see each other on Zoom, where everybody else witnesses everything that's happened. And in those sorts of environments, I think that teams over time, particularly if they're dealing with challenging issues, as I'm sure they might be at Hanforth Council, um, the, the relationships between individuals can degrade over time. There isn't mm -hmm. the bit before the meeting, at the end of the meeting, where people reassure one another about the purpose of what they're doing and have you know casual chit chat and so forth, which actually helps build and maintain those relationships. And that's not there with frequent zoom meetings so i'm wondering if that might be why their relationships seem a little frayed although i do wonder if perhaps some of the issues run for to before the pandemic as well mm -hmm. i mean it makes you kind of wonder what their physical meetings were like pre-covid you know was there the similar level of shall we say tension or was it a different kind of experience and has this been at, as you say exacerbated because they're having to do it remotely or, or is this actually what unfortunately may 
be commonplace in which case there's deeper considerable deeper issues to deal with um but from a remote perspective it's you know um having a good remote meeting it can be challenging um and you're right i don't think there's potentially a lot of um training out there for people when they're trying to coordinate them and stuff and we, we're happy to provide some of our content if people want to have a look at it to help them um additionally actually we've got some more coming out so i'll put up a link that's coming up here and probably down here that people can sign up to if they're interested in finding out more details particularly about how to manage chair and um, coordinate meetings and things but it, it, yeah yeah Definitely what i would not, say is I, I hope we've not had meetings like that let's put it that way with our experience I, of running several of these over the past couple of years i don't think so what i would say is uh i think you know jack i don't know what's going on between the lines there but mm -hmm. but in the end jackie did a good job of restoring order in the end yeah. there um and actually that was probably easier on the virtual platform just clicking the um eject button um than physically ejecting those people from the council chamber so um mm -hmm. so maybe the rest of the meeting was more productive and, and they had a better time than they would have in person potentially being mm -hmm. able to digitally exclude those those well, people I'd who love to be a fly on the wall for the following meeting to be honest there we go so and finally gandhi so how come we got to watch this so this was going to be um forwarded to their conduct um kind of department or something mm -hmm. jackie said um so but the recording's made and it's been leaked i wouldn't like that to happen with any of our meetings mm -hmm. so um how do you think that came to happen um well yeah it'd be interesting to know how a what should have been i imagine a secure meeting um thing got leaked um i guess for our purposes we work in, within the healthcare sphere and trying to prevent that from happening simple principles in terms of ig really sensible so only serve all with secure passwords and that kind of thing and at least then you can know that only those people with the passwords if they have shared it would have been it's a bit easier to track down potentially who's done it downside is it's maybe impossible to also find out you know that's the you know the issue with sharing meetings whilst there's real benefit from sharing recordings to people you can never prevent anything from 100 percent ever being shared outside of you know the, the physical i think time. i know what happened here gandhi so mm -hmm. i think this was probably this isn't a technical hack or a problem with the platform this is the human factor so i think somebody wants to take down uh, Councillor Burkle and um, the original chair who was ejected and there is a human being and within the council who has deliberately leaked this to the press and that's the problem because um, actually security can be good um, yeah. but the human factors is, 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 is often what what lets you down you know an individual mm -hmm. people um, can can leak so but I think that's what's happened here it's not really a flaw in it's, it's process and humans and I guess that comes down to things like probity and just making sure that people are aligned up to the principles of what you're meant to be doing, why you're meant to be doing it. And yeah, tricky mm. one to overcome, though, because the human error is the one thing that nobody could ever completely take out, is it? Mm. So that was an interesting video, something different for us, a, mm -hmm. a watch along. Um, we could always do 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 more of these if we find um, that people liked it. And if we yep. find other interesting and relevant videos to um, to look at. True. So if you have found this useful, definitely let us know in the comments section below. Um, again, if you have found this a useful piece of content, leave us a like. That'd really appreciate it. And let us know as well that you found this as effective content. And as always, EGP learners, we're here to help save you and your patients' time by taking out to your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.